Welcome back to another segment of Let's Talk and Grow with Ms. Roshoba, part two. I have Dr. Mohammed here, Tashaka Mohammed, to continue to hear his wisdom shared to us. You see, because we, we don't really honor the elders like we should. In the motherland, you know, when the elders speak, everyone bows, that they found and took time to share some of their wisdom and legacy through information with us. So I'm giving you real food today, uh, people, real food. And the topic is, he did it his way. So this is segment two, and I'm gonna to continue to question uh, our great elder here today. So what event that occurred in your life that made you proud and gave you hope for the future of our people as a whole? What event over your lifetime would you say that made you so proud uh, and, and have hope for the future for our people, our people, and the world as a whole? Well, every day, every, every day, you know, you see, you see people that have accomplished things. Uh, you see young people that are going somewhere. The uh, uh, I'm uh, in the Council, the Metropolitan Council of Elders. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Council of Elders, Greg King. Yeah. Uh, we had a, uh, a program honoring young entrepreneurs coming up here. Okay. So to see young people uh, accepting the torch that is being passed. Yes. Um, you know, people like, you know, myself, elders that have been out here kicking and shoving, for a long time, it's time to pass the torch. It's time to pass it, the it's torch. It's the young people coming up. But we have to tell them the history. Right. If we fail to tell them what happened in the past, they have no idea what will happen. No in the point of reference. Right. So you're most proud of what, would you say, uh, you know, that's happening. You know, I, I, I would thought maybe you would say, President Obama, having seen the first biracial black man in, 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 in our, as a president no, in the highest I, office. No. What would you say would, would Obama you know? being uh, elected president was something that I wish my grandmother and my great grandparents could have seen because this is what we've always been told. You know, we were told this lie that you can grow up and be anything you want to in America. Yes. Okay? But 475 years before we had a black president, mm -hmm. okay? So it did happen. Um, and uh, it, it, it is true that anybody can be president because we had a black president and then we had an ignorant ass president, mm. you know? And uh, uh, Mr. Trump and my grandfather on my mother's side was Native American. And he taught me how to read signs. And if we'd have paid attention to the sign, we would have seen this coming. Yes. Because Trump rhymes with rump, which is a polite word for butt. Now the butt say his best friend is poop. And mama say when you poop, you fart. Hmm. Okay? And <laughs> so, and we know. He's a comedian also. <laughs> we know behind every fart is some shit. So we should have seen the shit coming. Okay, people. <laughs> now is your time to smile, okay? Because, right. yeah, the doctor will always make you smile when he's also giving you the medicine of truth. Yeah, what I do is called edutainment. Edutainment. Educational entertainment. Okay. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You know, that's one thing he's always done over the years when we would sit and talk or find ourselves on the same stage doing greatness. You know, he, he kept us laughing because we, we, we have to do the work, but we, we have to smile and be serious and not always be serious about it. So um, what have you noticed that is, is a cause of concern for the current generation? that has to face now in the world. In the U.S., just in the U.S. within the South, this is where we reside. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, what have you noticed that is a cause for concern for the future, and the, for the current generation? All the evil in the world is due to ignorance. Okay? If ignorance is 
not knowing but self-imposed ignorance is worse because it's not wanting to know okay? okay so all the evil in the world is due to ignorance that's a one of my favorite quotes from Abba Kemmel. Okay. okay, so uh, ignorance. And because we live in a system that oftentimes, as people of African, born, uh, born African descent, um, we, we don't oftentimes control the narrative because, you know, you started off by saying we're kind of tribalist because, you know, those that live in the South stay in the South, those that live in the North stay in the North, the East, and we don't kind of co collaborate and get together as much. Well, again, the so, is traveling. Exactly. So I, I guess my question to you is, how do we co connect and get together and, and break that and, and uh, do, because you say ignorance is an issue that we find ourselves in. And when you're in the box and you refuse to get out of the box, that ignorance becomes even more uh, uh, larger and it's, fed to the future, the children. So so what is a cause of concern knowing that we're still practicing uh, a way of being from the past and the future, the 21st century has found new and innovative ways to oppress us and keep us in the box. They've recently did what they call CRT, critical race theory, where they're omitting our story from the books, which, you know, it, it always starts in school with slavery anyway. It did not go deeper like who we were before. I like to say, you know, we were enslaved uh, for those 246 years and the years preceding that. But just, but to come back to what I'm saying, uh, what is the cause for concern since we're not still not controlling the narrative and they're finding unique ways, especially after the last president, to keep us in our place? What do you want uh, the future, the youths that, and even the freedom fighters to know that they must do differently? Well, it, um, actually, it's like we, have to, when you say critical race theory, first of all, if it's critical, it's important. Yes. Okay? Secondly, they, we, were, we, we were never taught our history. Right. Okay? They can't teach it because they don't know it. The ones that know it won't teach it. Right. Okay? And we have to start, like, Black History Month and Juneteenth and everything, we got to stop starting at slavery. Our history goes way back further than that. We Correct. are the original people. Correct. We have to start in Kemet. Right. You know, we have to start in Africa, which is not an African word, it's a Roman word. Right. Okay? Right. So, originally, um, the continent we called Africa was called al Kibalan. al Kibalan. History mm -hmm. being made, okay. talked about and, right now. And the, and the, the Romans, uh, there was a Roman general named Cipriano Africanus, who established a little colony in North Africa near Morocco, mm -hmm. and the Romans couldn't make any headway into Africa, so they called the whole continent Africa. Africa. And we still do that. Right. We still do that. Right. And, uh, and, but that's not, that's not the name that, that was given, you know? And out of the seven continents, you'll find that most of the continents like the United States, have states. Africa, these are countries. Correct. They don't have states. That's correct. America takes countries and converts them into states. Correct. Like Alaska, you know, right. and Puerto Rico. Right. Hawaii. Okay. These were sovereign countries. Right. So, okay. and, and, I, and I, I, I agree with you in how they have created it thus far. But the part that I'm trying to say is now, you know, I'm glad you know that. And again, he's reminding us that history is important. And he, what he said is critical race theory. It's critical because it's critical that we know the truth. Because if we continue to allow the feeding of uh, untruth in our daily lives about who we really are, 
Um, then we're going to see that we're kicking the ball down the road about uh, our oppression into the next generation. And as we know, Dr. Muhammad has spent his life, you know, his life doing the work. And that's why I would ask you, what concerns you about the fact that most of us still don't know our history? How would you say that the youth should go about learning who they are? Well, it, it's, it's we can teach who we are to our people, okay? Critical race theory is taking it out of the public schools because the status quo white folks don't want the next their next generation to know right. what they have done. Okay, they don't want their generation to see you know, their the right. evil that they right. have. Right, it's, it's not so much about they don't want black folks to know their right. history. They don't want the next generation right. of white and Asian children and people from multicultural people to know what they have done. Very, 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 very powerful point my elder has made today. Because as we know, especially those that live in America, there's been some Johnny come latelys of immigrants from Eastern Europe, uh, from Afghanistan, those folks that are coming in from different countries here and see the state of black people, of African people in America, you know, the ones that now on the streets and and they're wondering, they come and they go straight to the top. They're wondering, what is going on with these people? Why are you black people, you, you all were born here. Why are you not taking advantage of the benefits of being an American? Well, our elder basically said, when you don't know the story of our of African people then in America, born Africans, then you're not gonna know that it was a well-designed system that made them have to be suffering so. So thank you for that. So I would say, and agree with you that, you know, knowing what you've said, the youth got to get to what, reading? Is the, it? the reading is important. Read everything. You know, my grandfather used to tell me, read some toilet paper with something written on it. Mm. There might be something that'll help you, okay? You realize that uh, when we were enslaved, our people were enslaved, it was a hanging offense for a black person to learn how to read. Hear that? Okay. Um, that they uh, they burned in libraries in Alexandria. Mm. All that information is gone. Every time we lose a person like an ancestor, we've lost a story. Yes. That's an entire story. Yes. Okay. And the word history is spelled his story. That's correct. It's not our story. Yes. It doesn't say world story. That's correct. It doesn't say universal story. We live in a country that is so conceited that they play baseball games with teams in the United States and call it the World Series. <laughs> they don't play nobody else in the world. That's like you and I having a whist game and say, we the champion, we the world checker, we're gonna beat everybody now, okay? You see, he, he always brings a smile on my face and the laughter. So I just had a nice little vacation right now, just hearing my elders speak, and thank you for that. But you're correct. We believe too much the narrative that they've laid out. Right. So, right. you know, how are you going to become, you know, have lived in a place where they've enslaved your, your ancestors and continue to oppress your, the people of today, and still we send our children to those schools to be educated? Well, public school was created for colored people. Mm. You realize? Public school was created for black, for, for, for colored, colored people. For colored people. We was colored then. Yes. Okay? Because you couldn't go to school with white folks. And that was private school. Right. Okay. No, I, he, he, they had, no, the white folks had a school when we were enslaved. Right. You know, when we were marginalized. Right. Okay? So you couldn't go to school with them. So after the Emancipation Proclamation, they said separate but equal, which is really separate but unequal. But so they created public schools so that we could be miseducated. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's why public school has always been secondary education. Okay. So when, when okay, so if public school is secondary, and that's what they call it now, public school, what is the primary school for them called? Private school. Private school. Home school. Home school. Home school. Home school. We don't do that anymore, and that's what we need to do. Yeah. Because, you know, we got grandmothers under 30. You know, so they don't know nothing, know nothing. You know, you can't teach what you don't know. That's correct. You know, even if you, even if you have white teachers that, you know, really want to do something and be involved, they don't know. That's correct. They don't know. So all the evil in the world is due to the ignorance. And so, you know, I just want to piggyback on what he said. So a teacher back in the days, well, a black teacher before integration, during segregation, when we had our, you know, a little shack of a school with used books passed down from, you know, the white community uh, schools to ours, you know, there was this thing about the honoring a teacher, honoring what they bring to the family by teaching the youth, you know, what they bring to the future. Uh, oftentimes, a teacher during those days was never married. They never got married. They had no children because there was a dedication to teach the oppressed African people so that the future could be a better place for us. So what I just shared with you is history. And if we understood what was done then, we wouldn't take teaching lightly. And for all those that are teachers out there that your main job is whether or not you're making the money, um, enough money to keep you in the schools, well, if you see the value in teaching African-American youths to make it better tomorrow and to make it where when you hear the word of uh, another black youth on TV, on the news, it will be another black youth has done greatness rather than another black youth has taken his other black youth's life. So we have to think differently because there's a real difference between the oppressed and the oppressor the hunted and the hunter. And so we must not get caught up in the fact that uh, the narrative says, you know, uh, that we're here and we're all Americans with all the same goals. No, quiet thyself to putting the phone down and do some introspection. So um, I'm gonna ask our brother one more question and then we're gonna take a break uh, on section, segment two. So, my elder, uh, there's been a rumble recently about reparation for African Americans for the enslavement of our, ans of, of our ancestors. What's your view on that subject? About reparations? Yeah. Um, reparations are long overdue. Uh, we built this country. We know that. Um, but, you know, when you're talking about Religion and politics, you got to talk about the four P's. Politics, politics, and political pimping. Okay? Say it again. Call it. Politics, 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 and political pimping. And political pimping. The, the three four, P's. The, four, the, the four P's. The four P's. The four P's. It's involved in everything. And, and uh, um, reparations is due. Reparations is coming. But you have to get involved. You know, reparation um, is like any opportunity. Um, it knocks at everybody's door, but you gotta be home. Yes. Okay, you have to be prepared. Yes. You have to be prepared. The stereotype is, they gonna give black folks money, and a Cadillac and Mercedes mm -hmm. is gonna go up. You know, we have to learn how to respect money and handle money. Yes. Okay? You know, there's been a saying that money is the root of all evil. No. The need and the greed for money is the root of all evil. Exactly. Okay? Yes. But you have to learn how to handle it. Yes. Invest it. Right. We haven't started looking at, some of our entertainers and rich people have started to look at art as an investment. Mm -hmm. We have not decided to do that. Mm -hmm. But you'll find there White folks will go to Africa and buy authentic African art, mm -hmm. and you'll never see it because they use it as an investment. That's right. Okay? That's right. We have not learned to invest in ourselves. And, you know, and uh, what he said is, again, very powerful because you see, 
What we have learned is how to spend money. Even if we don't have a, our home that we could say is our own, we've learned to spend money. We've learned to show the world what we have exteriorly to show that we are valuable. And you know, this is part of the trickery from the past that still we're kicking along from one generation to another. So my fear of uh, reparation and the giving of money uh, appears to me that that money would go right back to the people that are giving us that money. It, it, it will. It will if we don't learn right here. Mm -hmm. This is the Sacramento Black Wall Street. This is the beginning. You know, like they, you know, um, so we should expect kind of the same reaction they did with the original Black Wall Street. Okay? Mm -hmm. They do not want us to have that kind of power. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that's why they're trying to change voting, you know, and everything. Yes. In fact, they're getting ready to eliminate money. Yes. Okay, there's a program called Fed Now, where you will, uh, everything will be on a, a debit card, mm -hmm. and they will control your money. Mm -hmm. They will control our money. So you find that people are investing in art, in gold, and in silver. Okay. Okay? Okay. So and, yeah. We need to learn to have an economic base. Right. Okay? We need to learn to communicate just by using the three principles. If you have an event, you should be able to call three people. And those people should be able to call three people. Correct. And those people should be able to call three people. That's right. all you're responsible right. for. Right. You can get a thousand people here. That's correct. With the three concepts. That was something that we did in the 60s. Right. You know? Right. So, and with the social media and self and AI, it's changing the way that we process information. Yes. It's changing the way that we think. It's changing the way that we communicate with each other. You know, uh, you've been calling grandma's phone number forever. Put it in your phone and you forget it. That's correct. Okay? It's true. You can't remember your own number. That's right. You know, it's, if you lose your phone, you lose your mind. Locked out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, everything's oh. in my phone. Okay? So we have to understand how to use technology and not let technology use us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it's a powerful tool, but it's a two-edged sword. And so what he's saying is so powerful because that's what connecting the dots from the past to the present is all about. It's elders like uh, Elder Tushaka, Dr. Tushaka, Muhammad, and how he's speaking. Because for you younger generation that does not know what it's like to not have this device in our hands waking us up, telling us how to think, absorbing our time, he's telling you what used to be. And if we, if we see uh, the elders as, oh, something that's antiquated and, you know, have no value, then we're going to really end up walking right into a brick wall. Because one thing I know about this country, everything that it's about is based on history. History on how to make sure we continue to stay in our place. History in knowing what to leave out of the school books in our classroom. History to know how to keep us from not co-mingling and doing what we need to do to rise. You know, and I, I would like to say that when black people eventually become fully strong and confident within their own self. Everyone will benefit from us. Not just the oppressors that are benefiting from us now, but we could benefit from our own selves. That dollar bill would be spent, 90 cents of that dollar will be spent in our community before it trickles out when we understand ourselves. You see, so that's an investment that we must really uh, look at, knowing our history, knowing and, and, and breaking that mystery, honoring the elders, because there was a time in the past, not just here, but in Africa, where a young person should be following this elder around daily. <coughs> And myself, because I'm an elder too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, right here, right here in, in Florence Square, there are black shops here every day. Yes. We need to learn to turn our money over in our own community. Uh, yes. Uh, my Asian friends brag about 
how their money is turned over 10 to 12 times in the community for their relief. That's correct. Okay. We do it less than 1%. Yes. But right here, right here in Florence Square, there's Crowder's, there's all kinds of shops here. Uh, there's an entire- Attorney office. Uh, 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 here, right here. This is where you come to find whatever you need. If it's not here, I'm sure there's somebody here that can give you a, re a black resource where you can find what you need. See, we have to stop buying what we want and begging for what we need. Mm. Buying what we want and begging for what we need. You see, he never ceased to, uh, to well, he always, I shouldn't say, I guess he always surprises me because when he speaks, you know, it may sound like it's just a joke, but there's some serious uh, information in his uh, poem. So, you know, um, I'm gonna go to segment three. I'm gonna go to segment three. This will be a, the third and final segment. You know, I want you to digest what you've heard today, folks. It's time to be courageous. Even if you have to go to work Monday through Friday, think about when you're going to spend your money, where you're going, and what your purpose is, and think, you know, can I be going somewhere else to give it to someone in our community? You know, it's important. It's important. And so, um, thumbs up. Subscribe, leave a comment, share, and give some respect to us, the elders, as we do our part. And let's talk and grow with Mr. Shumba. I'm going to have a treat for you on the other end.